Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Terry Doherty with the Mom's Choice Awards, and I'm joined this afternoon by Camille Matthews, award-winning author of the Quincy series, and her third award-winning book, Quincy and Buck. Congratulations! Thank you, Terry. It's we so just, good to see you. You too. Now, we just found out about this one last week, right? That's right. What awesome. a way to come to BEA. That is a fabulous way to come to BEA. So I heard you off camera talking about this being your favorite of the three. What makes it so special? Well, the thing that makes Quincy and Buck so special is that it was inspired by trail riding in New Mexico, which is one of the, my favorite things in the world. And uh, I lived out there for 12 years and uh, I love the trail rides. And uh, so this one's all about trail riding in New Mexico. And it's got some beautiful pictures. Oh, cool. I can't wait to share them with our audience there. Now, who is Buck? Buck is also a real horse, as is Quincy. And uh, those who know the Quincy the Horse books will remember that they're inspired by a real horse, Quincy. And Buck is also a real horse. Uh, for uh, the purpose of the book, we, we had him owned by someone else, but he's also a horse in our family. And he's the head horse. And so Buck, uh, Buck kind of is the head horse of our family and he runs the barn and he, he runs the herd. Now, you had talked earlier um, off camera about this having um, broad appeal across different age groups on the subject of bullying. That's is right. Buck the bully? Buck is the bully. And it's very interesting because uh, as Quincy starts out, we get to New Mexico and he wants to learn to trail ride more than anything in the world. But he's afraid. He's afraid he's going to meet wild animals out in the desert. And so Bo tells him, just get behind an experienced horse, do what he does. You're never going to be brave unless you get out on the trail and try. So one day, instead of taking down Bo's saddle, uh, Cam takes down Quincy's saddle. And the next thing Quincy knows, he's off in the trailer and they're picking up this horse named Buck who he knows is one of the most experienced and brave horses that he, he's ever heard of. And so he decides he's going to get behind Buck and just do what he does. Well the problem is Buck turns out to be a bully and he gives Quincy the mean look and makes it clear that he does not want to help Quincy and he really does not want to be his friend. It's interesting that you say that, you know, a lot of times when somebody says bullying to me, I think of this very physical, aggressive, mm -hmm. and I mean, your point about it's the mean look. How can parents draw on that to help their kids, you know, take the story of the two horses and make it relevant and give them social cues to pay attention to in their own world? Well, I think it's amazing and relevant because horses are so relational and their communication is completely nonverbal. And so I think the way parents can, can uh, use and incorporate this is that uh, uh, bullies are intimidating and it's all about uh, you know, knowing what a bully is, that Quincy learns the young, for the younger child the message is that you know, Quincy learns what a bully is, that it's a, the bullies can be dangerous and you need to stay away from them. And uh, as he goes on, he, he learns more about himself. But his first lesson is that bullies are dangerous and you stay away from them. But for the older reader, the you know, third and fourth graders, it's really more about Quincy finding out that life gets kind of can get complicated. He goes, he knows he how to make friends. He hopes, he trusts that he'll just get out there and get behind an experienced horse. But it's a lot more complicated than that. So uh, he gets into a, a problem and you know have, goes through some adversity, and that's when he really finds out that he needs to turn to himself and to his own inner strength, and that that's when he. He becomes brave. So there are a lot. There are things about uh, uh, emotional cues, verbal cue, uh, you know, nonverbal reading, nonverbal behavior. There, there are uh, lots of things about coping, what you do when you deal with a bully. And then the really interesting thing at the end is that they're coming along and they run into a dirt bike because in, the, in New Mexico, dirt bikes and horses share the same <laughs> trails. 
and uh, so they run into a dirt bike at, as they're coming down the home stretch and Buck turns out to be afraid and he, he won't go so Quincy has to lead the way home because he's not afraid of loud noises. So one of the things that I, I think it's really get, uh, delves into a little bit is that you know bullies are really afraid underneath and that their intimidating facade uh, you know really can hide their own insecurities and you know I'm really happy with how that kind of that came through in the story. Well one last quick question for you you know through the conversation we focused on you know sort of a parent engaging their children mm -hmm. through this story. Mm -hmm. Does it have broader value, do you think, like in a classroom or a library situation right. where it will be shared? Right, well, I think that's really true because uh, for the parents, it's a great way to just start the conversation when the child is young, you know, before they get to be teenagers and they don't want to tell their parents anything. But uh, what I've heard from teachers uh, is that they really find uh, all the Quincy books, but especially this one, is a way to start a conversation and that when they read them aloud, it's not just about the reading level, but the kids really get to talking about things. And I've found that in my author visits with this book. I'm really surprised with how much kids already know about bullying and how, how you know anxious and, and willing they are to, to talk about it. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank it's so you. nice to have, I haven't even had a chance to read it yet. So congratulations. Well, thank you so much.